So these Baltimore Ravens, they dipping into that savings account again and they opened up some cap space, but for who? For what? And how exactly did they do it? Uh, well, before we get into this video, got to give a shout out to whoever the caller was because a couple of people let me know that there was a caller on 105.7 on the fan this morning that gave us a little shout out. I did hear that they kind of misconstrued all words, but it, it, it's all good and it's, it's not a big deal. Um, I appreciate whoever that is. I, I appreciate you. Um, but now uh, the Ravens, it was reported this morning that the Ravens converted uh, about 8.5 mil of Ronnie Stanley's base salary into a signing bonus. So that created uh, a little over 6.3 mil in cap space right here, right now, this year in 2022. But what for? What is the reason? Why would they open up cap space? Now, honestly, I, I thought that the Ravens, I thought they, they didn't really have much cap space, uh, even though the cap is cap. But I thought they didn't really have much cap space. I, I thought that they had maybe like a million, maybe like three million, something like that in cap space, but nothing crazy. Uh, but Jonas Schaefer cleared that up this morning. He said the Ravens had, so previously, they had about 8.9 million in salary cap space before restructuring Ronnie Stanley's deal. So now it should be up to about 15.3 mil. Um, and he said Ken Drake's Raiders contract had offsets, so the Ravens' new deal would not cut into their cap space that much because there were some people thinking, oh, is this all for Kenny and Drake? Is this for Drizzy? Uh, but no, of course it couldn't be. And I don't think anybody needed uh, Jonah Schaefer to clear that up for that to already be clear. But if you did, then that's fine. It's, it's clear now. Um, but anyway, um, Brian McFarlane. <laughs> Ooh, he was dropping some bombs this morning uh, because he it's like he, he, he took a little slow. It was a slow burn approach because it was like, huh, huh. Then bam. And let's read what he had to say about this, the Ravens opening up this cap space. Uh, he said, this was somewhat unexpected but necessary with more guys going on injury reserve and needing cap space for the practice squad because you need about four mil. Uh, and then practice squad elevations, you need about 900,000. Adding the 52 to 53 to cap, you need about 1.5 mil. And having funds for in-season injuries, you need about five mil. Uh, the nine mil they had before, the little, a little less than nine mil they had before yesterday, it just wasn't enough. Okay, so that, that's that's cool. Okay, thanks for the explanation, but it continues. Then he said, unexpected because while a nice cap savings, so it is a nice cap saving because you get a little over 6.3 million cap space, uh, it adds potential dead money to Stanley's ledger if he does not fully recover and live up to his salary. And I know with Ronnie Stanley's injuries, um, they have been big, especially because he's getting paid big. So I know a lot of Ravens fans, if there's a player that, that's hurt, then Ravens fans, they, 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 they get their pocket watching. They're like, hey, wait a minute now. You're getting all that money, but you ain't been. So anyway, um, he said uh, there was already substantial dead money to deal with. 29 mil in 2023, but now they've added six mil. So basically what he's saying with that, you better hope now moving forward. With Ronnie Stanley, that you do get some bang for your buck. Um, Ronnie Stanley is just, I said it all this offseason. I said it last year too. Anything that we get from Ronnie Stanley this year should be considered a bonus. It actually shouldn't be considered a bonus because he is a requirement. Um, but I feel like anything you get is a bonus. Uh, so, again, you know, Raven's not rushing. But anyway. That was that was the slow part of it. That was, that was a slow. Now let's get to the bam. He said this move also means that they've given up hope of reaching a deal with Lamar Jackson since an extension for Lamar would have created this needed space and they would not have needed to restructure Stanley. Woo. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Oh, Brian talking that talk early this morning, man. Um, so he, he's pretty much saying, and I can understand his reasoning on that reason being because if you really thought like, Hey, we are going to get this thing with Lamar Jackson done. We're going to make this thing happen. Then Ronnie Stanley would be something like a, a last resort type of thing. 
Now, whenever the conversation comes up about possible restructures, Ronnie Stanley's name is always at the top of the list. It's always the guys who are making the most money at the top of the list because uh, restructuring their deals will create the most significant amount of cap space. But restructures are last resort type of things. Restructures are not your first option. They should never be your first option. They are your, a last resort type of thing. So what Brian McFarlane is saying with the Ravens going to this last resort already then that shows like, oh, they're not confident in this whole Lamar Jackson thing. Now, anything, of course, could happen. Anything could happen. But they, they went to that last resort. And usually you only go to your last resort when your first couple of resorts, they ain't coming through. So we'll see. We'll see. Got a very interesting video about Lamar Jackson and um, the Ravens and their contract negotiations from an outside perspective. Uh, coming up a little bit later from somebody who's not a Ravens fan, but they've been paying very, very close attention. And they brought up such an excellent point. Can't wait to drop that video later. But anyway, um, what could this move be for? Who could this move be for? Because the Ravens, um, again, when, when you when you make a when you make a move like this, then you you got to have something coming, especially with Ronnie Stanley, his salary. Um, so my thoughts would be pass rusher. Probably get a little edge guy, get a pass rusher. Maybe it's a significant guy because they, they opened up a significant amount of money. Um, but, yeah, pass rusher. I know some people have been talking about, oh, maybe a receiver. Uh, I just don't see them doing anything there. Um, but, yeah, pass rusher. I, don't, I wouldn't say inside linebacker. I wouldn't say offensive lineman. Um, I don't know. I, I just do think, I still do think that uh, with their tight ends, I still think they're going to keep three. Um, just waiting for them to put Charlie Kola on injury reserve. And I don't think that they're going to keep all four. Like, Andrews is likely, obviously. Uh, then there's Boyle and um, there's Boyle and uh, Josh Oliver. I don't think they're going to keep all four on the roster. I just, I don't know, man. Maybe I'm crazy, but I just don't see them keeping all four tight ends on the roster. Of course, they're going to make some more moves with the uh, the offensive line. Falele might go to IR. Uh, J.K. Dobbins, he could end up going to IR. Um, they expected to sign Kenyon Drake, so we're just waiting on that too. Um, but I mean, I don't even know, man. But if I had to guess, I, I would say it would be for uh, a pass rusher, for somebody on that defensive side of the ball. Um, and, oh, and Kenyon Drake, whenever that does happen. But as far as them adding a another wide receiver, I don't see it happen. As far as them adding offensive line, I don't see that happen. Um, they already got about 63 tight ends, so nothing needs to happen there. Um, I don't know, man. With these Ravens, sometimes you just never know what to expect, though. You never know what to expect. But, I, again, I, I expect it to be a defensive guy, pass rushing guy. But, see, then that's the thing, too. That's something else to think about because what type of pass rush are you going to add? Now, if it's somebody of significance, I ain't going to be mad. But then it would make me think, like, what, what type of pass rush are they going to add? Because you got Tyus Bowser. And he is uh, out for at least the first four games, at least. Um, so are you going to add somebody who, like, can really, like, hold it down as, as that guy at pass rusher? Uh, as that guy at outside linebacker? Knowing that you have Tyus Bowser coming back soon? Like, or are you going to add somebody who's just more so a, a complimentary piece or, or a depth guy? I don't think you go through all these loopholes to, to just add a depth guy. Now, again, I always say quality, Qu quality over quantity. If you can get the best of the best, hey, go for it. Even though, I mean, at this point in the season, are you really getting the best of the best? Well, if you can get the best of the best that's available, by all means, go for it, my friends. Do your thing, buddy. Um, but I, I just I, I, I just wonder. And I mean, we'll find out very soon uh, what this is for, because we know, like we've talked about extensively, the Ravens, yeah, they got their 53-man roster set, but it's obviously not set. They still got plenty of moves to make. They are not going to go into week one with the roster sitting like it's sitting right now. With two available. Oh, yeah, and David Ajabo, he got to go to injury reserve too. So injury reserve, they, they about to get a whole lot of uh, Ravens friends that come through. Now, good thing is going to be temporary. So that's a beautiful thing. So Charlie uh, Kolar. David Ajabo, possibly J.K. Dobbins, maybe Daniel Filele. So injury reserve is going to have some friends, some, some pieces sitting there. Uh, so when, they, when they're healthy, they can come back. 
Um, but all right, what are the Ravens? What moves are they gonna make to counter the guys that they lost? We'll we'll see real soon. And uh, is this this is just fun to think about though. But anyway, team, keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Happy Wednesday. And hey, like Ravens are when it comes to money, <laughs> we out.